you could take on a role. Um, Olivia Hart would be cool to take over. Do you know what time it is? Yeah. First, I'd like to introduce, you know her as the heir to the dragon. Her name is Jenna Frank, who will be playing Ashley Reed in Legend of the White Dragon. Everybody get up for Jenna Frank. Yeah. What's up, what's up? Yeah. And our second guest for this panel, you guys know her as, well, you may have known her as Maya. You may know her from Cabin Fever. You may know her from Stuck in the Middle, but she is Serena Vincent. She'll be playing Rebecca Reed in Legend of the Wide Dragon. I love you. It's good. This is my first show of the year, so this is a good way to kick it off. I'm excited. I've been a little bit nervous. My anxiety has kind of been bad with the whole holidays and stuff, but just thank you guys for all the support. And it just really means a lot. Also, my first con of the year. Woo! So, great way to start it off with a bunch of Ranger fans and Legend of the White Dra Dragon fans to be. Yeah. Supporters. Yeah. How are you enjoying San Antonio? I know Jenna, you come here all the time, but how do you guys I'm enjoy I'm from H-Town, so yeah. I don't know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, like, we come to these things, like I flew in and then yeah. got a, a driven to a hotel and then got driven to here, so we won't see the city. Uh, but we're not here for the city, we're here for you. So, Legend of the White Dragon is a huge movie. It's set to be completed this year, but I want to go over some uh, Questions that get asked a lot and kind of just knock them out of the, of the, so everybody knows. So, the first one, which is what we get a lot, and I feel like there's the same question every single week, is when is it coming out? So it's definitely coming out this year, which I'm really excited. You guys excited about it? Yeah. yeah! So we are trying to make sure that everything is perfect now that our main actor is not here, trying to fill in a lot of loopholes and stuff. So it'll definitely be delivered to you guys this year. Still working on an exact date. But we will definitely get it to you guys as soon as possible. We're trying to make sure everything's very, very good. And we have the producer of Marvel on our film now. So, wow. there, yeah, it's basically like a Marvel type film now. So, yes. Uh, so. There's like a ton of pieces that go into making a movie and a ton of people. There's actually like the filming of it when you're on set, that's called physical production. And then there's post, and there's lots of different things that go into post production. And so, yeah you lose like the main person then that's going to slow things down so um but it's all for the better yes like, not to mention y'all started like good things come to those who wait yeah y'all yeah. started right after the pandemic yes supposedly ended, right? i remember whenever i was on set i was so scared now even though i didn't have covid but if anybody had covid like the whole thing would have to be shut down so whenever i did the test we went down we're like please please no, but yeah, I was. I think I started filming at 21, yeah. I believe. Yeah. And it's really amazing. I've seen like about 30 minutes of the film, and it's so amazing. Especially just the scenes with me and her. I feel like, I mean, even Aaron said they're the most touching of the whole film. So, yeah. So, another big question that gets asked a lot, and I went up and if you guys follow me, you guys know I asked Aaron about some of the same questions, and he's probably like the best person to follow to get the most up to date because he's constantly working on the movie. But, when it comes out, how can they see it? We don't know yet. I said. <laughs> hey, that's not up to us. It's not up to Aaron. It's a, it's like a whole thing, right? Like who decides to ultimately distribute the movie and where they're going to see it. I think the goal for every movie is for everybody wants every movie to go theatrical and like and like just you know be a huge box office hit. But like films, people are t taking in content differently, so we don't know. We'll know when we know, we'll tell you. Hopefully theatrical, <laughs> that's what we're planning for. Uh, even if it's limited theaters, yeah. that was like our first uh, go-to. So for sure my dad wanted to go theatrical. So even if we have to do like a tour and yeah. do the theatricals, yeah. but we're tr it's definitely gonna be on Netflix or to the movies, but definitely we're trying to figure it out so it's like the best. Or, or something like Netflix or like yeah. Paramount. Or no, 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 we'll for sure go to Netflix. I don't think I'm just saying. I don't know. 
HBO Max and stuff. No, yeah. hey, no, hey, no, hey. But definitely, we'll probably go to Netflix after theaters for sure. Awesome. Yeah. So, for those that are not familiar with the Legend of the White Dragon project, I I want to clear this up. Mm. And Jenna and Samir, you're the best people to ask for this. But is it power readers? No. Sorry. <laughs> no, but it's its own universe. And you know, it's funny because like my dad wanted to show his like hard side, you know, like his tattoos and you know, Tommy's cussing in here. So it's kind of like, but you know, it's so cool. It's like an action film, you know, it's really cool. There's guns and it's just, but the whole meaning behind this film is like mental health awareness, you know, and it's just so real. It's so the opposite of Power Rangers, you know, it's its own universe. But what I love that your dad did was like it's not Power Rangers at all, but he he for the, for you guys for, for his fans he did pepper in yeah, that's a few cool. Rangers um, and I thought that I think that's really special um, and that's why I'm here and um, and well, maybe but um, I so I thought that was really cool. Yeah, and also I do want to say um, it's kind of cool because in the film. You know, he goes to go pick his suit, and they're like, what color? And he looks, and he picks green. So it's cool <laughs> stuff like that. You know, there's little, like, spinoffs, but it's definitely its whole universe. And my dad really wanted to work hard to create his own, like, IP to be up there with Superman. And I just think it's really cool. So thank you guys for all the support. Can't wait for you guys to watch it. <laughs> so in, in y'all's own words, and I know, Jenna, like, the movie, uh, especially for your dad, was, like, deeply personal. But... We all know it's an action film and, and that, but what do you, how would you guys describe what the film is about? It's a lot about his life, which is really weird. Like you'll see a lot of scenes that it just seems too close to home. You know, cause growing up, you know, like my dad would be on, you know, the road and stuff like that. So there's a lot of times I didn't see him. And in the film that's kind of brought up like a lot. And there's one scene where he's just like, I'm exhausted. Like I'm so exhausted. And I just feel like it shows a lot about you know, like the stuff he was fighting and stuff. So it's just, it's really, really raw. I feel like that's the most important. It's just so real, you know. Everyone talks about the Michael Madsen scene with, yeah. with uh, your dad and him. Yeah, I actually almost shed a tear because we were in San Diego and I, I never saw that scene before, but they mentioned my name like a lot. But yeah, that was so, that was my dad's like favorite scene of the whole movie because it was just so like, you know, and even Aaron, they, they said that they took like two clips and then they couldn't even do it anymore because it was just so raw, like it. Yeah, and Michael Madsen said he's never worked with an actor like my dad, so that made him feel really good. That's cool. He called me after, the, your dad called me after that scene to like tell me all about it and, and just, my relationship with Jason was like, like actor to actor and like just digging in deep to the character and you know, a lot of the other rangers had like 30 year long relationships with him and I didn't, I got to come in on this movie with him. And so we really got to know each other on this film, like in these roles and, and, and he cared so much about his character. And I cannot tell you how like refreshing, I'm not answering a question, I'm just making my own things up now. <laughs> but like, he cared so much about making Eric Reed, Eric Reed, like a full, real person. And I can't tell you how many actors I've worked with that are just like phoning it in, like, what are my lines? What do I say? Where do I stand? And he cared so deeply about creating this timeless superhero, untouchable legend um, and, uh, and character, anyway. Um, so I just think you should know that, like, his whole heart was in it and it was so fun to work with him as an actor because that's how I work. I put my whole heart into every role, you know? And so when you like line up with someone like that, um, it's magic that happens. And I think that our scenes together, there was like, it was magic. It was, it, it almost feels like it really happened, right? It was so, and that doesn't happen very often. Like you, your memories of being on set and scenes usually feel like you're on the set. And um, it was really powerful. I do want to say it's kind of cool because I auditioned for a TV show that she's in, Stuck in the Middle. Yeah. And uh, it's funny, I still have the, the, the audition. And now it's cool because she plays my mom now. So like, it's just so cool to see everything in life is a full circle. And it's just honestly like the connection that we all had, you know. Like she's going to be like my mom for life, you know. And it's just, it's just so raw. Like I just can't. 
can't even express it enough how raw it is, and that's just the most important thing, you know? It's it's really good luck to play Serena's daughter. <laughs> yes, it is, it is. It is. <laughs> and it if is. any of y'all don't know, she, she was on... Uh, Where's your mic? Here. It doesn't work anymore. Here, here, yeah. bro. We'll, we'll share. If any of y'all don't know, she was in uh, Stuck in the Middle with Jenna Ortega. And this was, what, like six or seven years ago now? 20, uh, 2015. The end of 2018. Okay, so yeah. Jenna Ortega was was the point of view character. And we all know Jenna Ortega from uh, Adam's Family, or Wednesday. But Adriana Greenblatt also played your daughter. Ariana, yeah. Or Ariana Greenblatt. And she has blown up this year completely. Yeah, so yeah. sprinkle your magic. <laughs> yeah. I know, please. She, she doesn't need me. But, um, I don't think it's me, but I I, I feel blessed to, to to have these kinds of I feel blessed to have these kinds of relationships and connections and you're multi talented, my love. So you got it going on. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, I would take a piece of Jenna and Ariana's <laughs> career right now, for sure. <laughs> so I'll, I'll just try to project as best as I can, but... Um, use this. No, it's a, it's a, Why not? Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right, so um, I wanted to actually ask, because I want to ask how you guys secured your roles on Wonder Woman. I mean, how were you guys, how did Aaron and, and Jason come up with you guys, like, sell you on the movie? I want to say real quick, my dad always made me work hard for what I have and what I had. Um, like he literally made me get a job at 15. The day I turned 15, I, I used to pull up in the G-Wagon to wash some dishes. Uh, every day I was there at 7 a.m. till 2 p.m. So my dad always made me work hard for what I, you know, so I had to go through a couple, you know, auditions and stuff like that. But I was so scared the first day I went on set because he told me, if you're not good, I have to fire you and have somebody else put my daughter. And I'm like, oh my God. He was serious, though. He was serious, you know. So I was like, oh, no. Like, it's not going to happen over here. So, you know, so I, I worked hard and stuff like that. But um, it's funny because me and my dad actually have done a couple of different short films. Um, so it was just cool to be able to play his daughter. It just seemed so like, you know, I was a teenager with attitude, you know, you'll see that and stuff. So I was yeah. like, yeah, Apple doesn't fall too far from the tree, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. What about you? So I had heard, I was a fan of Bat in the Sun. Um, my husband had done a movie with them, like played Mr. Freeze. And like I had seen that, there are things, I was like, oh my God, these filmmakers are amazing. Um, so I was aware of them. And then, uh, anyway, Jason just called me or texted me or sent me a voice text and, um, you know, told me the, uh, the premise and asked if I would play his wife and sent me the script. And um, so, yeah, Jason asked me himself. And I didn't realize that, um, at the time, I didn't realize that the other filmmakers were, were Aaron and Sean and the Bat and the Sun guys. Um, and then I put it all together. and. Uh, I mean, when he told me Jenna was playing his daughter, I was like, well. Wow. Come on, I got to know. Come on. <laughs> yeah, you look like you my daughter. I know. So, you know what's so funny? So many people think she's my actual mom, because like my mom has blonde hair and blue eyes, you know? <laughs> so everyone thinks she's my, I don't know, it just feels so like genuine too. Like, I don't know, like, and you know, like she said, it didn't feel like we were on set. You know, yeah. So it was amazing. I'll, I'll, for, I'll never forget it. Those days. It's really good you can work with people that you can connect with as well. No, yeah, for sure. Sorry, Mike. No. <laughs> I think, does anybody have any questions? Does anybody have any questions? Don't be scared. Come on. All right, come on, John. Wait, who's taping this? You're, are you for the con? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. I just want to know where this all ends up. <laughs> so, obviously, you know, a lot of us, were, we grew up, uh, a lot of us, we grew up Ranger fans, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of hype going into Legend of the White Dragon. I know when I met uh, Jason back in 2020, it's like he had already he already unleashed the campaign. Everyone was like, he's trying to hype this movie up. Is it a surprise to any of y'all how much hype there has been generated by not just people who grew up on it, but the new fans who, you know, they're the children of Ranger, of, you know, the Ranger kids. And has it surprised y'all that, you know, we're still doing this? <laughs> well, yeah, it kind of does surprise me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 I 
Well, honestly, it does surprise me, but at the same time, my dad's such a, you know, like, icon and stuff. And I don't know, I think also what he did outside of Power Rangers, too, like, my dad was just such a good person, you know, that, I mean, yeah, I'm surprised, but at the same time, I know his potential, so, you know, how about you? I, I'm not surprised. I, I think, like, I think Jason was a master at promoting anything, you know, and creating. Um, like a master manifester, and um, and uh, he had, I think that he made everybody feel special, and every person uh, actor who's worked with him, and all of your fan, you know, fans, and he treated everything that way. So you know, he's blessing this in some way, and he started the whole thing. So I'm not surprised at all. Mm -hmm. I think it's just beginning, actually, because yeah. the film isn't even out yet. Yep. Yeah. 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 Does anyone else have questions? How about you guys, if you guys have questions, just line up right here, that way we can get them answered. All right, what's your name? Robbie Hernandez. Okay, what's your question? What's the toughest thing about making the movie? I mean, I think the emotional impact um, can be a little bit hard, because actors, you have to really believe you're this person, you have to dig you know, deep into it. I mean, I don't, I wanna say it's hard, but more challenging. I think the hardest part is getting everything done. Edited, sound, you know, production, all of that stuff. That's, I, I think that that's the hardest part. Even after you film, you have to make sure the sound is there and stuff, but the emotional impact too can be hard. Some actors actually lose themselves, you know, doing, you know, trying to fit into a role. But definitely the post-production. Yeah, I mean, we're not always around for post-production either as the actor, but um, I don't know, I've been doing this for like 25, 30 years, so I love it. Um, I like. I think it's very important to not lose yourself as an actor, like Jenna was saying, so people lose themselves into emotional roles. That's not a healthy way to work. You need to be able to like work and step into your role as an actor, and then at cut, be able to like be a mom, and be a wife, and be a friend, and be a, what, a sister. And, and that's like the job, is to be able to like transition and not be, lose yourself in it, you know? Um, so for this particular movie, the hard part is, I think, probably finishing a film without the main actor. The hard part for Jenna is the emotional toll. This is her dad, right? So this, this movie in particular is layered with other things that are making it, that are complicating it. But in general, movies should just be fun. Yeah. Not always. Yeah. <laughs> should be. Thank you. What's your name? Jane yeah. okay, Williams. Uh, what's your question? Mm -hmm. How many years did Jason Momoa work on the Power Rangers show? I did 47 episodes. So I did, Ooh. what was that? That was a... <laughs> In, in Power Ranger world, that was one season. Like that's like crazy. In Power Ranger world, two seasons. I don't know how they how they break it up. But yeah, two seasons. So um, and then they switched the cast. That's what they would do. So, but I came. I was nineteen. Yeah, I was a baby. <laughs> and my toy just came out twenty five years later. <laughs> Thank you. What's your name? Your question. My name's Sean, and uh, Jenna, this is kind of a question for you. If there was a soundtrack made for the movie, would you come out with any music from the movie? Ooh, yes, I actually question. did talk to Aaron about that. We gotta get it because you know, I'm pretty sure my dad would want you know my music yeah. on top of everybody, anybody else's, you know. But I would try to make like a theme song. You know what's funny? The dude who produces all my music, he made this Power Ranger beat in 2020, way before I met him. It's like go go Power Ranger, and it's like boom boom boom. So I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't use that, but I would definitely have like that would be cool, like a soundtrack and like the movie, like a theme song of Legend of White Dragon. Thank you for asking that, bro. Because yeah. music is really important to me. It's my outlet. And I think everybody deserves to have a positive outlet. You know, something that pours into you and uh, pours out of you, you know what I'm saying? So, that would be really cool, man. Thank you for your question. That'd be a great idea. Yeah. Do we have any other questions? All right, come on, Tony. 
So you uh, you mentioned how much this movie is not Power Rangers. Did it surprise you how much it's not Power Rangers? <laughs> No, because my dad always wanted to create his own like IP, you know. Okay. So he wanted to like think outside of the box. But like she was saying, there is a couple like you know sprinkles here and there, you know. But no, not really, because he always wanted to create his own IP. He wanted to, you know, because Power Rangers is for you know kids and stuff. So it's kind of you know the acting's a little bit cheesy, you know. So, but it was cool for him to make his own IP address, you know. Yeah, I, I also think that just okay. So I've done, I did Power Rangers, and I've also done like you know, 100 other things, right, or more, yeah. I don't even know at this point. So, and I I only get this question from Power Ranger fans, that, you know, like, why did you do this thing, or why did you do that thing? And, um, and I think that Power Rangers is such a fiercely loyal community, and fiercely lo loyal fans, that sometimes we can forget that a lot of us who have played Power Rangers are, are at, 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 at our, in our hearts just actors. Like, I don't, like, we all want to, like, like, the dream of an actor is just to do all the different kinds of roles and play all the different kinds of characters, including Power Rangers and superheroes and moms and comedies and dramas and horror movies. Like, that's a dream. And, and I feel like, I, I feel like that, I never said this to him, but whenever he was like, it's not Power Rangers, it's not Power Rangers, what I always wanted to say to your dad was, you're an actor. And he just wanted to play something different. You know, and, and like, but he was so fiercely known for Power Rangers yeah. that it was hard for people to see him outside of that. But he's a really good actor. Yeah. A really good actor. Yeah. I don't think I answered the question, but that's my, my <laughs> answer. <laughs> no, you did. Well, yeah. Not to mention, I mean, you were talking about, like, you know, you've done Power Rangers, but you've done a lot of other things. And one of the things you've done is you're a published author. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, I write books too, and screenplays. So, um, I wrote a book called Everybody Has a Belly Button, which teaches our babies and toddlers about skin color right from birth, um, because we need to raise the generation of just less racist children. No racist children, that would be nice. Um, uh, so I wrote that for my kid, and it's really beautiful, and then um, and it's published, and it's in bookstores everywhere, Target, Walmart, you get it anywhere. And then I wrote a book series when I was your age? 20s, 30s? When I was uh, like 10? Oh. Okay, 10 years ago. Uh, wait, wait, what do you like 20? 20 makes you go, huh? <laughs> I, wrote, I wrote a series of girlfriend to girlfriend advice books where we redefined the term hot chick. I wrote how to eat like a hot chick, how to love like a hot chick, and live like a hot chick. And they were like silly, sassy, what? fun. Yeah, did I that. Did that. <laughs> um, I just finished a horror screenplay uh, that I wrote with my dear friend, and we're hoping to make it this year. So you were you were talking about your music, Jenna, and I want to ask what inspires you. Like, is there any artists that inspire you? <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go. <laughs> they already know. They're looking at me like they already know. Um, so somebody that y'all may not know because he passed away at 20 years old, but at this time he had already ate platinum records. He was competing with Drake and the Beatles. His name is Juice World. Yeah. So I don't know if y'all have heard of him, but his unreleased, like I love his stuff that's out, but his unreleased, like, and you know what's crazy? I was watching his documentary and it's so weird. The producers and director of this film was Tommy Oliver. That was the name, right? He lost his dad at 19 and he did a show right after, right? And it was just so many like just connections even though I never met him, but I look up to him so much. He's one of the main reasons why I started music. And if you listen to a lot of his unreleased songs, like he was just so okay with talking about anxiety, depression, you know, and, and that's hard, you know, especially being a dude, you know, to come and talk about that and just be open about it. So yeah, and Tupac. Cause you know, I grew up on Tupac. My mom used to get so mad because my dad would let me listen when I was like three years old. <laughs> yeah, for real. But definitely Juice World. And you know, just honestly, like it was weird because I was looking at like you know old journals and stuff. In 2018, I don't know how old I was. How old would I be if I'm? I don't know. Four years ago or six years ago? Six. Yeah. Oh, okay. So. I can't even do well, that. you say you're not even 20, I'm so. 19. <laughs> 13? 13. Okay, so I was 13. I wrote a song called Depressed, right? And I'm just like looking. I'm like, dang, I was 13, you know? So I just think that was my outlet. Every time I would get mad or sad, I would go up and write a song. And my dad would come up and listen. And I'm like, look, you know, but he, he really supported my music career a lot. But I just thought, like I said before, I think it's important to have a positive outlet, something that you can pour into. 
But definitely Juice World. I love you. Rest in peace. Nine 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 forever. <laughs> I, I really want to know what inspired you as becoming an author as well. I don't know. I just think in general, I feel like I'm a creative person, and um, I think it's important, especially like actors now, anyone who wants to be in the business now, uh, to not you know sit around and wait for the phone to ring. Like we have you have to take your career in your own hands. Like you're not waiting for music producers to call you. She's writing her own music. So. Um, I had a great book idea with one of my best friends, or we did together, and and so we just wrote it, and then we tried to get an agent, and then we got one, and then we tried to get a book deal, and we did, you know, and it's just uh, uh, like anything else in life, just, um, I was a born hustler, you know, I was like, I have an idea for a kid's book, and I have like five more that I've already written, I have like so many ideas in my head, I feel like I can't get them out quick enough, you know, and then now I'm a mother in real life, and, and now I really can't get anything done. <laughs> like, I have like a little per human to take care of. Yeah. But, um, but it's really just like this feeling of like, oh, I have so many things in my head and in my heart, and like how do I get them out into the world? I think a lot of artists, actors, musicians feel this way. Like how, how where's the time to, to do that? It's yeah. like that song in Hamilton. Like running out of time. Yeah, running out of time, yeah. I, I do want to say real quick too, me and her are like super spiritual too, so I think manifestation is very important. Getting it out there, like you have to believe that you're the highest version of yourself before you even get there. You have to believe in your mind, whatever you want, you could truly have. Like the sky really is the limit, you know? And we always are on our little spiritual journeys and spiritual talks and stuff. Yes, amen to that. Positive energy. You know, without God, I wouldn't be here, so... That's just how I feel, but whatever you believe in, wherever your faith is at, just stick to that and just keep working towards your highest self, but believe that you are already that person. Believe that you can get anything in this world because you really can. It's just sometimes we're our own critics and you stop yourself from being the best version of you. Act as if, yes, 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 <laughs> act as if, you know, dress for the job you want, all the things, however you want to put it, but like, you know, you gotta. You have to believe it before you can see it. If you wait to see it before you believe it, you will never. You will never, never see it. You have to see it in your mind first. Well, that's a great set for this next question. And it's for both of you. What and what sort of goals that you guys have going forward with your careers? Um, so, I mean, you talked about having the movie yeah. possibly made this year. What is something that you want to overcome? Hmm. I just feel like I'm never gonna stop. Like I've been doing this for so long. Like I've, aud I've auditioned for thousands of things at this point, and, um, and like I've met people. They're like, "Oh, you're still at it." I'm like, "Yeah, I still. I just finished the movie the movie over the holidays. Like went back and forth. You know, yeah. Uh, and like I'm just never gonna stop. So I have like goals. Like I mean, I think everybody's goal is like just to be on a series again. Like consistent work like work as an actor we're like in the circus we're all over the place and we have a movie here and a movie there we're flying here we're flying there we're doing, it's a lot right and um so for me as a as a human as a mother and at this age i'm my i'm looking for more uh calm <laughs> more consistency you know rather than just bouncing all over the place going from movie to movie and country to country is like super fun in your 20s but it's different now <laughs> all manifest that for you yeah, yeah, no, for, uh, um i feel like for me definitely i want to get some albums out there but i definitely do want to be like on a series also i'm starting a lot of foundations like Mighty Military Foundation, we're gonna start that for the military to raise awareness for the suicide, you know, and just all just the PTSD, all of that stuff. So I just wanna really just do big things. I just wanna help people, you know. What about podcasting? That's so funny you said that, because I was supposed to say that. that. That that was something, I wanna start podcasts, yes. Mental health, we're just talking about everything, you know. That's something I really wanna do. But just creating foundations and helping people as much as I can. I just wanna save people, like, and one of my songs, I talk about, like, I want to be the light for, like, the lost. And that's just really how I feel, you know? I just want to help people and, like, maybe show people, like, you know, I lost my sister the year before my dad. Like, exactly a year and a month. And she had a baby and stuff. She was six months old. So my life has been not the easiest these last couple years, but I do believe, like, this year is going to be good. So I just want to help people as much as I can. 
That, that's my main goal. Yeah. In talking, Serena, about your, your career, looking back, what do you think was the most fun you had playing a role? You know, I get this question a lot, and like I can't pick one because, like, they're all so different, and like one thing leads to the next thing, and it's like if, if it weren't for Power Rangers, I literally wouldn't be sitting here today, right? And um, if it weren't for Cabin Fever, if it weren't for di like Stuck in the Middle, like um, I've I've done a uh, lots of movies that have meant so much to me that like not a lot of people have seen. Um, so there's. Like all the things that I've mentioned, Legend of the White Dragon, the movie called Everybody Wants to Be Italian, Stuck in the Middle, Power Rangers, Cabin Fever, Not Another Teen Movie. Those are like like the things that I'm probably most known for, and those were all really special. Um, but there are like little nuggets of films that like, I'm really proud of my work that like not many people have seen. And then there's all the things where you're like, Okay, I learned something. But I'm working with those people again, you know? And so, um, I don't know if I'm answering the question, but I, I can't pick just one, yeah. you know? My most recent series, Susie Diaz on Stuck in the Middle, I had so much fun playing that role. You know, I grew up playing like the mistress and like the stripper and the, you know, the like bad girl. And, and, um, and it was really fun to play a mom and like, I actually wore this on the show. I'm like, oh, it's yellow, I'll take it. Um, <laughs> That was a really fun role for me. Because as you age as a woman, you want to be able to transition into, into those kinds of roles, so. Is there any sort of role that you haven't done that you really want to do? I haven't done any like period piece, which I think would be really cool. I haven't done a Western, which I think would be really cool. Um, but really I want to move also more into, I, I will always forever be an actor, but I also want to move more into writing and producing. So that's my plan. That's the longevity. Get ready. <laughs> what about Jenna? What kind of role do you want to play, Jenna? Just something real. Yeah. You know, something like that euphoria has right? maybe yeah, just something that has story and character. I hate shallow stuff. I hate shallow conversations. I hate shallow anything really. I like stuff that's deep and means well. You know. Yeah. But I want to be in a horror movie. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> like a really like you know. So I know somebody that just wrote one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, but definitely, you know, just whatever is like, you know, not shallow. Yeah. Okay. Um, going back to Power Rangers just a little bit, um, what do you remember most about working on Lost Galaxy? I know it's so new to you at that time. So, being on Lost Galaxy was like, I said this earlier to somebody, it was like being in college. You know, I had done a few different things. I was already in the union. I had done a movie. I had done a few TV shows, a bunch of commercials. But then, like, getting on that show, we worked our asses off. We worked so hard. So it was, like, on-the-job training of stunts and ADR and, like, all these things that um, that you're, you're sort of thrown into. So it was, like, it was like college <laughs> for acting and also like the relationships, like all of us, like are, are the Ranger family, my, my other fellow Rangers, um, those are like, they're forever, we're forever friends and we're like for, forever bonded. So I don't remember the day to day, I don't remember the episodes really, you know, um, that's all a blur, it was a long time ago. But like the feeling of camaraderie, the feeling of working your butts off and like creating something special for the kids and for all, everyone. For it's like timeless. Also, it's timeless. It's still going. Like I feel so grateful to be a part of it. Like I didn't know 25 years ago when I got that job that I'd be talking about it 25 years later. Right? Yeah. That's pretty cool. That is cool. Yeah. Yes. Not, I have nothing to do with it. It's just it's cool, <laughs> <laughs> and I get to be I mean, part of it. 25 years later, they made an action figure. <laughs> I know. That's pretty legit. That's pretty legit. That's 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 a big thing. I yeah. Think. yeah. Open on <laughs> now we're getting ready to wrap up here. I want to make sure does anybody else have any questions? Christian always has questions at the end. Okay. <laughs> Christian came up to me last time at the end of the panel. I have ten questions. I was like, I asked you before, man. <laughs> All right, this one's a question for Maya. Um, in Lost Galaxy, pretty much you guys wore the same outfit for every episode. Uh, how, how was that like? I mean, I wore like this little like loincloth <laughs> skirt and then a little like 
piece of two pieces of material bra and boots. I remember like day one, I was like, are you joking right now? Like this is what I'm wearing every single day. And yeah, that's what I wore. And like you didn't question things. Like you just, yeah, shh, wear it, stand on your mark, say your lines. It's like no, nobody, you, you, we had no say. We just did what we were told. Right. Typically that's how it goes as an actor. We just, you're supposed to shut up and say your lines, stand on your mark. <laughs> I, got one more, I got one more question. Yeah. Um, this is for both of you. In any of the fight scenes that you've done or any other scene that involves like, you know, punching or kicking someone, have either of you ever accidentally actually <laughs> hit someone? Well, actually, our roles in the film, we actually don't have any action. Like, we're, we just play the pretty, pretty you know, <laughs> wife and daughter, you know what I'm saying? So we don't really have anything. We're not too into all that. But it would be cool to see, like, another movie after this. Yeah. Maybe we can. Yeah. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, for Power Rangers, there's all, I've gotten hurt so many times on films. Um, not Mr. Not, not Power Rangers. They were really, Power Rangers, we had a stunt team. So I did, we did our, when you see our faces, it's us fighting. If you don't see our faces, it's not us. So, um, <laughs> are the stunt team, like, and, unless you're Jason David Frank and can do all that stuff, but I can't do all that stuff. I do the splits and like a high kick and like that's about it. So, um, I definitely got hurt on films. Like, uh, for sure, like jumped off a building that was unsafe and like the harness didn't catch me. Oh, and then I had to do it again. And then, they, then that hot caught me midair and like knocked the wind out of me. And it's like, it, it gets gnarly. Bruises. I just did a comedy and I had to like, you have to fall. The thing is, you have to do things over and over again. So you fall in the same way over and over again. And you're just like bruised, you know? But it just, it just comes with a job. Thank you. Yeah. War wounds. <laughs> if you have questions, just line up right here. What's your mantra? Say a little bit louder. Mantra. Mantra. What's your mantra? Like my mantra? Oh. Like what do I like, say to myself daily? I love that. Um. Okay, this is, I totally stole this from Oprah, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is an Oprah thing, but I was watching something with her, and she said that right before she woke up in the morning, before her eyes opened, she said, Dear God, bless me into usefulness today. So I, there's a lot of things that I say to myself, but one of the, that, that's one of the things that I love. Bless me into usefulness. Like, make me useful. Make me, make up me mean something to people. Matter. Like, that's all we, we all want to, like, matter, right? And, and make people feel better and feel good and, like, and not like have wasted days. So um, I don't like wasting time. I don't like, like I've, it's so obvious that we're like on this planet for like such a short amount of time and we don't know how much time we have. So I just want to be like useful every day. So that's what I say to myself. What about you? Um, kind of the same thing. You know, I wake up and I thank God and I tell myself that I'm beautiful. I look in the mirror that I'm talented, that I'm strong, that I can do anything to put my mind to. And you should do the same thing. I think affirmations are very important. And just knowing you can do anything you put your mind to. The sky's the limit, like I said earlier, it's true. It really is. Some days it gets hard though, you know? But even on those hard days is when you have to say the affirmations even more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful question. Jade, nobody has ever asked that question yeah. ever in the history yeah. of Comic-Con world. <laughs> <laughs> it's, and it's my favorite question. Right, Jade. What's your mantra? What do you live by? What do you live by? Do you have a mantra? Have you thought about it? <laughs> you don't have to. You don't have to. Put her on the spot. What's your name? Cedric Coleman. Ooh, you can call me Ced. Hey. Like. Said the entertainer. Yeah. There you go. I like that. That kind of cute. Like Cedric the Great. Um, I was thinking. Um, uh, when, when I saw the the ending of the 
Power Rangers, Cosmic, Cosmic Fur Furry. I was pretty I love hoping. that season, by the way. I love that. Oh, yeah. I, I, I agree with you, uh, Jen. Um, I would say a rating 10 out of 10 is one of the top best Power Rangers team ever. And I was, I had a thought, I had a thought and they thinking about, um, cause I really, um, I really, um, don't like when, um, they got announced like the final season of it and the rest they, they got to move, move on, um, uh, from making more of uh, Power Ranger shows. Well, I don't know about all that. Maybe, maybe not. It'd be kind of cool if they came back. Yeah, I was really hoping so, like... Now I'm of age, so I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of it, speaking of... I was thinking of... Like a... A what if. I was thinking like a what if, like... Maybe... You could take on a role... Um, Olivia Hart would be cool to take over. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's you know what's crazy is her she has the same master morpher as my dad, so technically it has to be blood. I don't know. It's funny, I was looking at Amy's comments and people were saying, if it's not you, I'm gonna write against the whole franchise. I was like, let's do it. No, but and, and you know, I can do my own stunts. I know how to flip and everything. My dad would always be like, Oh, I did this one. No, it was a trampoline, you ran up and did backflip. I can do a backflip standing up. I know how to fight like really good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I believe. Uh, sure. your, your dad taught, taught you a lot. Oh, for sure. And I'm pretty strong. I got the guns, you know. So. Yeah. <laughs> Texas strong. Yes. 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 Olivia Hart, right here, right? Yeah. Okay. Hi. Um, I'm Sean Daniel Chumchaw. Um, my question is if the Power Rangers reboot, if it's possible, would you consider yourself being in it? As a green For reason. sure. You know, and, and it's weird because my dad actually had been talking to, do you know Iris? Yeah. Iris. So she was the one that helped get my dad when he was 19 or 18, I think he started. Yeah. But so she's been watching me grow up and stuff. But the moment I turned 18, my dad reached out to her and stuff. So they should maybe, you know, be in the works of something. They I just, should. I just don't know if they're going to reboot it, but. I don't know either. Yeah, maybe I should be Reach out to yeah, I mean, I think that would be cool. You know, I mean, I'm a good actor. I know how to fight. And stuff, yeah, you know? and I think you you'd be a great Green Ranger and call yourself yes. the Queen of the Lady Green Ranger yourself. <laughs> no, for well, you know what's cool? Olivia Hart is now in the Power Ranger universe, even though there hasn't been a movie or a TV show. Yeah. She's still in the universe. So. Yeah, but now there's you know. a comic book with uh, Amy Jo Johnson, yeah. Yeah. which yeah. I I love Amy Jo Johnson. She's a Me sweet too. woman. I never get to meet her, but I really want to meet her. Say hello. Yeah, she's amazing, man. I love her. I but I would so love to be a part of Rangers. So Rangers, if you're watching this, hit me up, man. Yeah. <laughs> it would be silly not to. No, seriously. No, I think they stalked my YouTube. It's kind of weird. Uh. Um, hello, my name is Carlos. Um, my question is uh, in regards to uh, Jason and Mr. Ian as well. Uh, have, have, uh, have you ever looked back on... Um, okay, have the two people have look back on your old work and thought, you know, like, wow, I can't believe how important the expression green I was about that sort of thing, like in regards to the roles we played and such. Uh, wait, say that part again, how, if we look back on what? Uh, uh, okay, have you ever looked back on any of your old work and thought to yourself, man, I can't believe how important the expression green I was? Oh, well, yeah, of course. I was totally green as an actor on Power Rangers. Um, but like you have, everybody grows. Like the whole point is to like grow, expand, evolve. So like I don't look back at that with like any regret or any like embarrassment or anything like that. Like I look at it to see like how far I've come and like, you know, I didn't, you, you know, you don't know what you don't know when you're, when you're first starting out and then you learn and we're still growing and I'm still always learning as an actor. But like now, 25 years later, like, I'm like so much like more confident. On, like I step onto set and like I step into a role and like I know what I can do. You know what I mean? I know like the power that I have, and that takes years of work. To just knowing the power that you have and like being confident to use it and like tap into it and all of that. So no regrets here. Well, I haven't worked on this. this is my actual first like movie, you know, which is really cool. Uh, but as far as like my music, I look back and. 
I'm just like, I, and kind of like she said, it's just a process, you know. But I look back at some of my old music, and I always tell Diana, Crystal, I'm like, ah, turn it off. But you know, but then I look back, and I'm like, it's just different. That's all that it is. It's not that you know it's better now or it was better then. It's just different. Like we're constantly evolving every day. You know, you're not gonna be the same person you were yesterday because this is a whole new day. You're moving forward. You know. So I think it's just beautiful seeing everything come together and looking back and seeing how far you've come and to give that pat on your back, you know, to yourself. I think that's really important. Thank you. Yeah. All right, last question. Mm. Mike is yours. There you go. She just wanted to share uh, what her mantra Okay, go oh, ahead. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's such a good That's one. A good one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You can't say can't because you can do it. You're doing yeah. a great job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You are, Miss Kimber. Well done. Well, that's going to be the end of our panel. I want to thank our guests here, Jenna Frank and Serena Woo! Vincent. Hey, also, I do want to say real quick, I just dropped a new song. It's called What It Was. And it has no cuss words. It just <laughs> so you guys should go check it out. Monetize. <laughs> <laughs> but it's um, just the meaning, the meaning behind it. I just think y'all would like it. So go check it out. J-Ray. Yeah. 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 And come see us. We're signing. If you haven't seen let's us already, come see us. Oh yeah, let's do it. Is that okay? Yeah. 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 Hey, can everybody try to squeeze in the middle? <laughs> yes. A big happy. Sad. Sad. Right. Oh, you're right there. You're right there.